And God says, as the war develops on this planet, you will need every seventh day to pause and remember what I did this week. But nothing was said during creation week that spoke to the number one question in the great controversy. Is it true that death is the result of sin? If so, does God torture and execute his children? Nothing during creation answered that. Many centuries passed till God answered on another Friday. At the end of crucifixion week, he answered that question. And guess what the next day was? But seventh day Sabbath. And Jesus rested in the tomb, though he'd love to have gone straight up to heaven after he had said it is finished to hear if the heavenly host agreed that he'd won his case. But consummately skillful teacher that he is, he rested over Sabbath and arose on Sunday, which adds to Sabbath keeping the most significant reason of all. Every Sabbath we reflect on the answer Jesus gave on Crucifixion Friday. Added to the answers he gave during creation week, added to the answer he gave during the exodus, which is the wording of the, seventh, of the fourth commandment, as you know, in Deuteronomy. We are to keep the Sabbath as a reminder of how God rescued us from Egyptian bondage. And don't say that was Moses' editorial comment. It says, this is what God wrote with his finger on the tables of stone, that the Sabbath is a memorial of the exodus from Egypt. It doesn't matter what event you choose, the Sabbath talks about God. The Sabbath does not talk about creation and the exodus and the crucifixion. The Sabbath talks about the God who so acted on those occasions. Now I can see that's why in the hereafter, Isaiah says we will keep Sabbath. From one Sabbath to another. And in imagination, I like to picture what happens in the end. For after the elements have melted with fervent heat, this earth is no place. Can you imagine being overwhelmed with memories, the first Sabbath in the new earth? We'd remember creation and all that went wrong. We'd remember the Exodus. We'd remember crucifixion week. We'd remember Hebrews that says the Sabbath is a type and a foretaste of the rest to come and now we've got it. And now God has recreated our world. I create all things new and we're there and there's Eden and God says, would you like to celebrate with me because I feel so good? And then at the end of that Sabbath, if God would say, uh, again, I hate to intrude on your freedom, but uh, would you like to do this every week for eternity? we would say, well, a month's enough, surely. It all depends how we regard that day. Well, when I read the 66 through, I come to regard the Sabbath in this way, and it never occurs to me it might be a law. Some arbitrary requirement, some test of my obedience, humbug. Only to somebody just barely starting out who doesn't know God very well could it possibly be regarded this way. And only those who have a rather narrow view, preoccupied with their own salvation, God's requirements, sin is a breaking those requirements, the plan of salvation, adjustment of our legal standing because you've broken the requirements, could ever downgrade the Sabbath to such an extent. Sabbath is a marvelous experience and in the last days I do believe that those who meaningfully observe the Sabbath will be publicly declaring perhaps at risk of life to themselves, to their friends, their neighbors, to the universe, to everybody. This is the position we have taken about our God. All these things that the Sabbath represents. Then and only then could the Sabbath be the final issue in the great controversy. Um, as Ellen White has said, do you think the conflict is over which day? No, it's over what the day represents. 